Anthophobia pulcherima, commonly known as poinsettia. This plant is from the family of Fabaceae and they originated from Mexico. They were introduced in the United States in 1825 by Joel Poinsett, who was the first American ambassador to Mexico and also a very renowned botanist. Hence the common name this far was dedicated to him. Poinsettias have become a contemporary symbol of Christmas around the world. A lot of places grow them to sell them during Christmas. Some people buy poinsettias from stores. They, do, they just use them once and done, and some people want to keep them. A lot of people have had difficulties in keeping poinsettias throughout this, the year, and then regrow them again, and then have them again blooming during Christmas time. We have had a lot of success throughout the years. We have developed different techniques on keeping them alive and keeping them together until when it's time to rebloom them again. It's a tropical plant and it's very challenging when you need to grow it in these temperate regions. This is where we use greenhouses to grow them. If you live in the tropical world, it's fine. You can leave the plant outside. All you have to do is like have the techniques on pruning it. So you prune the plant and leave it outside, you will be fine. If you live in the uh, temperate regions, you will need to put your plant inside. Even if you don't have a greenhouse, you can still grow these plants over to the next year. All you have to do is know the techniques in watering, pruning them, and then the right amount of temperatures. So we will be discussing all these things in the video. Because it has such a long growing period, the, to show the whole concept of growing poinsettia up to the flowering stage is gonna take us up to four months. We don't have four months of video time to put. So what we will do is we will start with the introduction now as a part one of this video and then I'll come and film part two onto other things like when they start blooming and what to do when the pest starts showing up, what to feed and stuff like that. For potting poinsettias we use um, pre-mixed soil. This is Jolly Garden C25. It has 55% aged back. It has uh, Canadian peat sphagma moss, vermiculate and uh, perlite. It's a very well balanced soil which is needed for poinsettia growth. And then after selecting the pot, I'm gonna use 8 inch azalea pots. You fill the pot. Make sure you get your soil in there real good. Um, so every pot, every pot has this line. It's called the water line. You fill your soil a little bit above it because when you water, it's gonna settle. There is a reason for having this um, rim here, and we will discuss that later when we already put stuff. So the soil should look like that in the pot. Uh, make sure it's packed right. Depending on which company you're buying soil from, if it uh, has too much back or too much sphagnum in it you may want to add a little bit more perlite. Some soils are sold, they're already balanced, like this one is pretty good balance, so we don't need to add anything, but if it was too heavy, we will add perlite on it, just to improve drainage, because poinsettias likes to go dry. This is um, how we pot it. Have a lot of pots already filled, ready and waiting for the poinsettia shipments to arrive, and I'll then take a video for us, so that you see, after you water them, um, how much, will go down. The soil arrives in here and it has been watered the first time before you have anything in the pot. It will end up with something like this. So after watering it, the soil settles in the pot. Now you know all the air bubbles are gone and the soil goes right to where you want it, right at the uh, water line. And we have a lot of pre-filled pots here waiting for the shipment uh, of poinsettia cuttings to arrive. Also, there is a labeling. This specific variety of pots here is called the Viking Cinnamon. And we will do an 8 inch azalea pot, 3 plants per pot. So, depending on the end use and how big of a bush or shrub you want your plant, that's, that will be determined by the size of the pot and the amount of cuttings you're putting in it. If you want a bigger more plant, you can put them in. Have uh, 10 inch, this will be the same piece, uh, with, uh, Viking cinnamon, 10 inch pot, it's gonna be four plants per pot. That will give you a bigger bush 
this will give you a medium sized bush. If you want them real small, we'll put them in six inch pot and we'll only do one plant per pot. When poinsettias arrive from the nursery, they come in boxes like this. And oftentimes, they don't have a tag. And this one says poinsettia viking cinnamon. So just to open up the box. Uh, remember these plants have been thrown overnight and they may or may not be too dry. But so initially, in the previous clips, we uh, showed the tree filled the pots with these um, wooden markings. These are just to remind us that in these specific pots, we will have the Viking cinnamon variety. And inside the uh, package, uh, out they have the plastic they are all wet and nice and this should be the front um, we expect that there are no damages in this case probably the box was thrown away or something and there are some stuff which is I mean they just get off the cells so when they come from the nursery they are put in these horses just the regular ones like the ones you find in florist shops. This is where the cutting was put in and then it's rooted out. So this is already a rooted cutting and this is what we want. We want rooted cuttings here for ease of operations. Um, you just confirm this uh, variety is the Poinsettia Viking King Cinnamon. Because right now you wouldn't tell, you won't know the difference if this is what is what. They all look the same when we open up all the boxes. So you get your cuttings and usually when you get the cuttings and you know this is a 10 inch pot and you already agreed previously that you're gonna put four plants in a 10 inch pot. You dig holes or you place the plants right into the soil and make sure the actual top of the, um, top of the, uh, of the sponge or the osis lies flush top with the soil. Uh, you put four plants per pot. Now, if you look, you will see they lie right down there, flat on the surface of the soil. That's how you put it. So now you have your four inch uh, four uh, four plants in a 10 inch pot and then you continue doing that over and over filling in the 10 inch pots then filling in the 8 inch pot um, so <clears throat> when you get your nails done and you don't feel like putting your dipping your fingers in the soil which is for field practical purposes it's just easy and quick of doing it the soil is clean and the plants are clean you can use a wedge this tool is called a wedge and this is a 10 inch pot you want to do four holes so you go one two three four you will get your plants one two three four um, as we spoke before you make sure um, it's laying flat to the surface of the soil and have it up the soil. That's one way of doing it. If you want to use this. Watering this. Remember the first time we talked about having a leap. We have this watermark on the pot. Um, so you come in with your rose, we call these filters roses. You put your rose in there and keep watering it. Um, as you can see, the beauty of that is the leaf will hold the water and the water will slowly seep down into the pot until it settles. By so doing, especially when you just planted them, 
you are actually even correcting the little tiny mistakes you made with the soil, like there are bumps and lumps and you're flattening it up. So now you can see you didn't splash soil all over the place, there is no seepage of water around the plant, everything stays inside the plant and it's all good and beautiful. Um, <coughs> when plants are already potted and started to grow, you can see this is a new plant this is just got potted like a couple of minutes ago and you can tell the way the top of the soil looks and the way the cuttings are looking they are not all straight and nice but these ones are weak old plant you can see the soil surface is all flat and then the cuttings are already started developing more of the terminal uh, more of the terminal leaves and the old leaves will start dying slowly. We will kind of like um, remove all of them. And if you can look at them, they're uniformly growing and they look more nicer and better. This is just a weak growth and we'll keep monitoring them. Also, <laughs> we start using these guys. These are called the sticky tips. We use these to monitor insects. Um, Poinsettias are like the favorite food for white flies. White flies love these guys. They love them so much. It's like you can use them as a trap crop if you're using some, if you're growing something else. So we use these sticky guys to start trapping up and controlling bugs. The next clip will be showing poinsettias which we have been growing on. Poinsettias will be pruned at the very end of the season. You can do this if you're in a big operation or you're just doing it at your house or home or if you're in the tropical and when they're done blooming you can just cut it down we usually cut it all the way down you can see the um, this is the old scar that's the new bud showing up so these plants were put in here in the greenhouse and they stayed dormant for like two uh, a month or two and then they started we start watering them then they started sprouting we'll show a lot of them starting to sprout up right now and most of them have already formed a lot of leaves most of these ones were cut down they look bushy some of them were in 10 inch pots but then when you want them to become a little bigger you move them up to a bigger pot maybe most of those have been grown here for four to five years uh, uh, growth worth and these ones are like two three years growth worth and you can see they are like three in a pot and some of those were like four in a pot the important part is to where do you want to cut it depending on what size of plant do you want at the very end or the final results rather in two three weeks after they've been reactivated and some of them reported you can see now they are all in like started blue um, shooting out leaves they are full and starting to retain the shape which you wanted now it's not going to be operational until when they start blooming again but they are all now coming out really nice and beautifully you can see the full foliage there and all the shapes and forms which you wanted initially you can train poinsettias to become anything you want these ones are being trained to become uh, standard you can see there is strings and a stake there so the strings are pulling the branches to the direction which you want and it will stay there the final result will be a nice beautiful standard you can also train them to become trees like these big huge trees in taking care of poinsettias water heat and light are the most crucial and essential parts of doing the whole operation poinsettias come from the tropics so they need 12 hours of daylight and the mistake most people do is they subject them to too much daylight then they will delay flowering that's one of the bigger problems. Um, in heat, they can tolerate a lot of heat, even though sometimes they get heat stress. Now, you have to be careful when you want to water them because you will kill these plants faster by overwatering them rather than leaving them to dry out. For example, this is a prime example of this. Um, if you look at the surface, you will see this plant looks totally dry, right? And then when you look at the plant, it's all flat. You will think, oh, this plant is dying because it's dry. Our idea is usually a flagging plant is a dry plant. This is just heat stress. It 
it's so hot in here. It's, it's like 100 degrees in the greenhouse. So the best way to do is lift up the pot. If it feels heavy and you're still not sure, you can take the whole clump of plants outside the pot and then rub at the root ball. If you rub at the root ball, it's moist. So this plant does not need water. It just needs to cool off. So cooling off, it will be at the very end of the day. So by then, the leaves will the target pressure will come back again and the leaves will be up there and good. So right now it's just fooling us that, oh, I'm so stressed, I need something. No, it doesn't need anything, it just needs to cool down. This completes part one of this video series. Um, in the coming months, we will be filming all the operations from fertilizing to pest management to staking, also tying down until when they start blooming. I hope you enjoyed this one and i'll be looking forward to presenting you some more nicer materials please subscribe to this channel so you can see what we do i'll also be giving out some other videos for um, other tropical plants we grow here thank you very much have a wonderful day and keep enjoying plants and happy growing thank you